for a very special and exciting webinar. My name is Justin. I'm a professional development specialist here at CLIA, and I'm just going to go through some quick housekeeping uh, before introducing our presenter. This webinar will run about 45 minutes with time for questions at the end, so please feel free to type your questions into the questions module of the webinar, and we'll get to them at the conclusion of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global. Finally, and most excitingly, Carnival is generously giving away 10 free cruises at the end of this webinar, so make sure you stay tuned until the end to see if you're one of those lucky winners. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Adolfo Perez. Adolfo Perez, a 40-year veteran of Carnival Cruise Line, is Carnival's Senior Vice President, Global Sales and Trade Marketing. In his current capacity, Adolfo is responsible for Carnival's business development team, sales strategy and operations, and trade marketing functions. Having always understood the value of the Travel Advisor distribution channel, Adolfo has been championing and advocating for the trade for decades. Since taking on his role, he has introduced several successful initiatives to reinvigorate and fortify relationships with travel advisors, including increasing commissions, launching the company's Travel Agents Rock support programs, and expanding Carnival's relationships with consortium partners. Under his leadership, Carnival launched Why Use a Travel Agent, the industry's first ever consumer-focused campaign to reinforce travel advisor value. Adolfo notes that his most important goal at Carnival is to be the travel agent's advocate and voice at the Carnival headquarters, a role he takes very seriously. So with that, take it away, Adolfo. Well, thanks a lot, Justin, and thank you all for joining today. Um, I think you ate up 10 minutes of uh, my time <laughs> with that introduction. Um, but uh, thank you very much. Very, very great uh, to be here. And obviously, uh, getting an opportunity to get in front of these CLIA agents uh, uh, and um, uh, you're sharing some news. Obviously, it's not brand new news, but um, I, I do think that it's important that we get this message out as much as possible because we, we kind of had a, a, a little start of this back in, at the end of 2019. And then we all know what happened. Um, and we never really got to push and really, uh, you know, talk about this great product that we offer uh, from Australia. So I think that one of the things, let's see if I can make this work, of course, nothing ever works when you want it to. One of the things that I think people probably think is that when you think of, you know, a guest that wants to go to Australia, you don't necessarily think of Carnival. Well, guess what? When you think Australia, think Carnival, because we are there. We have been there. Uh, it'll be 10 years this October that uh, the first ship, which was the Carnival Spirit, sailed from Sydney Harbor. <clears throat> And, um, you know, uh, it, it really has been an amazing time. The, the 10 years that we've been there, we've been mainly focused on sourcing guests from Australia. So we've got a great brand recognition and awareness there. Obviously, in the U.S. and Canada and some of the other countries, we do as well. Um, but, you know, it's not logical necessarily in today's mindset that you're, you know, think of Australia and you're thinking of Carnival. But I want you to because it's important. So one of the things that made it very difficult for us to really sell it in the U.S. prior to 2020 was that the, um, uh, the reservation system we were using for the Carnival Spirit in Australia was actually Polar, which was a Princess and Holland America system. And because of that, it made it, you, you had to, I literally wrote like a 10 page or 20, I'm sorry, 27 page document to our reservations department. <laughs> on how to book an American guest or a Canadian guest or an international guest on an Australian booking, uh, on an Australian sailing. So too many hoops to jump through, so we never really made a big deal about it. Well, you know, back in 2020, we actually moved uh, the Australia sailings onto GoCCL Navigator. So now you can book our Australian departures in US dollars exactly the same way you'd book any other ship. It comes up on the drop-down box. You can select the destinations when you're looking for sailings. So we've made it completely uh, seamless to make the reservations now. Um, and I wanted to talk about some of the exciting stuff that, you know, that we, uh, that we offer in Australia. So a uh, little overview of what we're going to do. I'm not going to, you know, walk you through this. We'll just go through the slides because I don't want to take up too much time on this. But just to give Americans in particular, I think some of us are a little ge geographically um, uh, challenged um, and I uh, wanted to give you an idea by in this slide, the, uh, the size and the mass land, the land mass of Australia and how huge it is. Um, you can see it looks kind of a little bit like an upside down United States. Um, 
and uh, almost you know very close to the same size landmass as the U.S. A huge country with amazing uh, places to visit. There's amazing wildlife um, and just a really cool uh, country to go to and really explore. And <clears throat> one of the things that I think that makes it great about you know makes makes a carnival cruise out of Australia great is that you get a couple of things. Number one, if you just go to Australia, yes, you're going to go, you're going to fly to Sydney, you're going to, you know, do some of the tourist things, you might go to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, but, you know, you have to, you have to pack, unpack, pack, unpack. We all know that the great thing about cruising is that you get the opportunity to, um, uh, you know, just unpack one time, enjoy your vacation, visit a bunch of places, pack again once, and then you're off. Um, and one of the great things that I think that's uh, really cool about our product in Australia is because there will mostly be Australians on board. It's not like if you went on a ship out of Miami where it's mostly Americans. Uh, so you get the culture of the places that you go to, but only in those spots that you visit. Uh, what's cool about this experience uh, is that your clients or you yourself um, not only get the opportunity to be on a carnival ship that you're accustomed to, that you love the service, the food, the options that we offer you on board, um, but you also, you're going to be immersed in Australian culture on board the ship while you're visiting these other places uh, that are just uh, amazingly beautiful. So it really is a perfect vacation, and I can't tell you how many people um, uh, have this on their bucket list, Australia, New Zealand on their bucket list. And this is the perfect way to, you know, kind of check off that, that bucket list item, uh, by, uh, flying to Sydney or Brisbane and taking one of uh, our carnival cruises sailing out of there. So, uh, as I said, uh, we, we've actually been sailing out of Sydney for almost 10 years. Uh, we've been, we've sailed a couple times out of Brisbane, but for the most part, we've always sailed out of Sydney. Um, and uh, we were supposed to launch the, uh, I think it was the Carnival Spirit was going to be sailing out of Brisbane because the Carnival Splendor took over for the Spirit in uh, in Sydney. Uh, Splendor in Sydney, uh, 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 the uh, Carnival Spirit was going to go to Brisbane. We've made a bunch of changes, and as you all know, we just recently took delivery of the Carnival Luminosa, uh, which was a, a company, was a ship for one of our sister companies, Costa. So she is in the process of being transformed uh, into a carnival ship with the carnival livery. And uh, although the funnel won't have the whale tail, it will look like a carnival cruise ship uh, when they arrive at the port. And now we offer these great, you know, two options. So Sydney, you can, we offer, uh, you know, a bunch of different options that can go to different places. Uh, because we're further north in Brisbane, we have access uh, to, um, to the Great Barrier Reef as well as the South Pacific is much more within reach. Um, and uh, these are really amazing destinations. You know, when you think of your bucket list items, you know, Australia, check. Uh, if you want to go to New Zealand, check. Um, we offer uh, the South Pacific and uh, we, were, we were kind of butting our heads here, like figuring out which islands were the ones that were actually in Fiji. But if you all ever saw the movie Blue Lagoon um, with Brooke Shields, this was back in the 80s. So I'm dating myself here. Um, the, uh, the, the, the beautiful, beautiful islands in Fiji, uh, you know, if you want to go to Fiji, then, uh, Carnival's your answer. Uh, and so you get to get a bunch of bucket list items off on those cruises. Uh, Tasmania, uh, how many of you think Tasmania is not part of Australia? Raise your hand. Aha, uh -huh. nobody knew it, right? So Tasmania is actually part of Australia. It's a different state. We all probably know it when we were growing up as kids watching Bugs Bunny and the Tasmanian Devil. Um, so this is just this is in, on the very south part of Australia. And it just, uh, because it's, it's so close, it's so far south, the, the weather there uh, is cooler um, because there it's opposite of us. So the further south you go, the colder it gets. Further north you go, it, the, the warmer it gets. And it just has so many different things to offer uh, for your clients to see as well as yourselves. And then, you know, one of the natural wonders of the world is in Australia, and that's the Great Barrier Reef. And, uh, you know, you've probably seen it in a lot of movies. Um, you can see this picture here, the crystal clear blue waters, the beautiful uh, coral reefs, uh, the, the sea life is just amazing. And uh, to get an opportunity to, you know, fly to Sydney, check out Sydney or Brisbane, and then get an opportunity to go to the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, how, how exciting is that? Um, it really just is a, a, 
such a, an amazing opportunity to really uh, you know, check out so many different places. Uh, we talked about New Zealand. I know that when we have New Zealand cruises, Americans love them because they want to go to both places. New Zealand's on everybody's bucket list as well. Uh, New Zealand, if you've watched Lord of the Rings, that's where they've filmed it. Um, so you know what the landscape look like, looks like. It's amazing. And we visit both of this, both the South and the North Island in New Zealand. Uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, that is uh, maybe not on everybody's bucket list, but it is a really amazing destination. Uh, it is very rare for us to go there. I think we go there once or twice a year. Um, and it's uh, one of the most uh, beautiful and amazing uh, destinations that you could have uh, you know, on, 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 your, uh, on your cruise. So what we're really excited about, obviously, this is sort of new news, although we've been talking about it now for a while, is that the Carnival Luminosa um, is, is moving to Brisbane. She will be sailing there starting in November. And you'll recognize this ship somewhat because she's a, she, and I'll go back to that slide, you can tell she's like a spirit class ship, basically. Um, so uh, it's a spirit class ship. It's got a few different things on board, uh, but you're pretty, you're probably pretty familiar if you've been on one of those ships uh, on, on the Carnival fleet. So um, this, you know, this is one of the things that's really cool about uh, the spirit class is that they have the glass dome that encloses the pool if you need to, if the weather is, is, is not so nice. Um, you can see the, uh, it was built for, for, uh, for um, our Costa brand. So you're gonna see a lot of Italian flair, a lot of design from, you know, Italian inspired design. Uh, and it's just a beautiful, amazing ship uh, that has been in service. I think about, I think it was about 10 years or 12 years now. And uh, she's, just, you know, the Spirit class has always been probably one of my favorite classes of ships. Just the, the way the ship is so long and, uh, it's got a beautiful uh, exterior, and then it's got really different uh, interiors uh, that you don't necessarily see on the, uh, when we had the fan, when we, when we still have the fantasy class, fantasy class, then the conquest class, then the, um, the, the dream class, and then Vista class. This ship design is really different from those ships, and only the spirit class has the, the way that it's set up is really amazing. But you can see uh, Joe Farkas is the guy who designed these ships for Costa. Uh, you can definitely see the Joe Farkas flair in his uh, in his uh, architecture here and design. Um, but the ship is really beautiful, and your guests are going to love it. Um, this is the main lobby, and I have to say that the uh, the statue, I can't remember, and maybe if I can help, uh, what do you call it, get a, a call a friend, if you guys remember the name of the statue, it's a very uh, famous statue that uh, by a, a, um, an artist who when he was alive or she was alive was not, uh, is probably not as valuable, but now that unfortunately the person has passed away, this is a very uh, uh, amazing piece of art. And uh, we did a, a seminar, a, a webinar with John Hill the other day, and he was he was on board already the Lumino, so he's gotten to see her. See her, and apparently, if you notice her right butt cheek, sorry to say the word butt, but I think that's okay. That's rated PG. Uh, her right butt cheek is the only thing on the statue that looks worn at all, and the reason it is the reason that. The butt cheek is <laughs> is worn is because uh, the Italians uh, believe that by rubbing her butt <laughs> that uh, you get good luck. So check her, that's something to check out. It's definitely a unique feature on board the uh, Carnival Luminosa. Um, she has the the Cloud Nine Spa. She's the only Spirit class uh, uh, now in our fleet that has uh, the spa cabins. Uh, and we'll have direct access to the spa. So you, if you have those spying clients, uh, you know, definitely a great ship for them. And then cruising from Brisbane. So Brisbane is known as the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. And Brisbane in itself is an amazing city. I'm gonna get an opportunity to actually visit Brisbane in the next, uh, not next week, the week after. So I'm flying out to Sydney to meet with my team there. Um, we're gonna welcome the Splendor when she pulls into the harbor. Um, and then we're going to fly over to Brisbane for a day and check it out. And um, one of our the, our, our uh, head of sales there, Mark, is uh, actually based in Brisbane. And boy, can he talk about Brisbane. I remember we did a webinar with him probably at the end of 2019. Uh, and he talked about all the great activities. It's a really fun city, vibrant. It's close to great beaches. And like I said, gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. The, the, the great thing about uh, the... Uh, 
the um, sailings out of Brisbane is that we offer three, four, and seven day cruises. Now, nobody's going to fly to Australia for a three day cruise, obviously, or for a four day, but a lot of people want to, you know, stay on land and try different things, right? And go to different places on land and then maybe take a, a, a cruise. Um, so the three day cruise is a cruise to nowhere. We, we no longer have those in the US. So you get an opportunity to be at sea for three days. Um, the four day does go to our uh, early beach, uh, which is spectacular. And then the seven day uh, does get you the opportunity to check out the Great Barrier Reef with some really beautiful scenic cruising in that area, uh, as well as you know shore excursions and all to visit these amazing places. Um, talked already about the Great Barrier Reef, you know, that's perfect for divers, for snorkelers, swimmers. I always say whenever we've talked about this place, I like the way it looks. I don't know if I jump in the water because I've seen way too many shark movies about Australia, but uh, I know that that's just Hollywood and uh, all make believe, but it, it really is. I mean, look at those pictures. I mean, where do you see that anywhere in the world? It's just spectacular. Um, Arley Be or Airly Beach, I should say, uh, is you know, a hopping town that's got great shops, uh, you know, restaurants, bars, a lot of things to do. You can relax, you can go swimming, uh, just a really beautiful spot. So then the South Pacific, so on the uh, seven day cruises, um, the, uh, you get obviously the opportunity to, to, uh, to visit more places. So Lifu, Mystery Island, and Numea, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so Mystery Island is this island that uh, only can be visited by cruise passengers. So it is truly uh, disconnected from the mainland and it is unspoiled and beautiful and literally has a very small number of people that actually live there. And the only way you can actually see this uh, destination is by uh, taking a cruise there. And we have uh, many of the cruises that stop at um, Mystery Island, which is Pretty amazing. I always thought it was spelled mystery, M-Y-S-T-E-R-Y. -E so now, I, now it, I always thought, what's the mystery about Mystery Island? And now I see they spell it differently. So anyway, Amity Island, I mean, you can just, you get a, a sense for uh, this, the, the magnificent beauty of this country um, and uh, of the places that we visit on these cruises. Um, I remember we were going to do something with John Hill, and I didn't think we were going to be able to use slides and show photographs. And I said, you can't tell people about these places without showing pictures. When you look at these photographs, it is just stunning. And speaking of stunning, Carnival Splendor, sailing out of Sydney Harbor, you can see the, the Sydney Bridge, the Harbor Bridge in the background, you can see the Sydney Opera House. Who doesn't have visiting the Opera House uh, on their bucket list? We always see it on New Year's, you know, because they have New Year's before we do. Not because they do it on a different day, it's just because they're ahead of time. They're ahead of us. Um, so it's already tomorrow there. Um, anyhow, uh, this this is gonna this this is an amazing uh, treat just on its own. So if you get to go to Sydney and just see all this stuff on board the ship is great. But obviously, our ships sail to these amazing places around Australia and to New Zealand and the South Pacific. So onboard highlights. So the you know the uh, the Carnival Splendor we've had now for a few years. Uh, you may have seen her when she was uh, sailing from the U.S. Um, you know, one of the other things that I like to tell people who are thinking, well, why, you know, Carnival, Australia, not really, you probably don't have clientele for that. But one thing that I always rem remind agents of is that when the Splendor did her uh, circumnavigation cruise of South America, because we were moving her from Los Angeles to Miami, um, she didn't fit through the canal, so she had to go around South America. So we had three cruises that totaled 15 days. And we had 1,000 guests on board that ship that were on the entire 45 days. So if you think you don't have clientele that will absolutely fly to Australia uh, and take one of these great cruises out of Australia, then think again because we do have we do attract people and they they love the familiarity of being on a Carnival ship, Carnival service. Um, it's the same type of crew. Uh, you know there might be some differences in the focus on coffee because Australians are big on coffee. They're also way bigger than us on apparently on beer. Uh, so we, you know, we cater to a lot of those things. So that's why we say you get an opportunity to not just uh, visit these places and experience the culture there, but you also get to get immersed in Australian culture. And the Australians and the Americans get along great. They have an amazing time together. 
So cruising from Sydney, these are the things that we offer there, the itineraries we offer. So again, the three-day sampler, I wish we could still do those in the US. Um, then we have a four-day cruises, uh, the five-day goes to Tasmania, eight to 12 day, you get the, the um, South Pacific, uh, eight to 10 days, the Great Barrier Reef and other destinations as well. And then of course, like I said, one of the things that we hear a lot is when we go to New Zealand on these cruises that Americans love those sailings. Um, and then here are some more photographs. So I was talk talking about Tasmania earlier. Um, it's not just home of the Tasmanian devil, but it is an amazing uh, destination in and of itself. Uh, you know, we were having this conversation the other day about how the weather there is just so different because it is so far south and, you know, close to the, you know, Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle, if there's such a thing, um, that it, it really is a, a really breathtakingly beautiful uh village and, and 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 part of the country it's actually its own state there and then the onboard experience so a few differences so obviously uh we're operating in australian waters we we follow different rules uh there one of the rules that some of your 18 year olds are going to love is that the minimum age to drink on board is 18. So uh, a lot of times I've heard, well, why can't I drink on board a cruise? It's not really in U.S. waters. Well, we follow U.S. laws um, on, on our ships in the U.S. and whenever, if, whenever we're sailing, even in Europe at all. But these ships, when they're operating in Australia, the minimum age to drink is uh, 18 as well as to gamble. Um, the other thing is we don't, we don't have prepaid grats and we don't charge gratuities on board the ship either. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't tip your room steward and your waiter and all. Uh, but it, it is a different uh, 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 program there, and that's something else that is, you know, at least for Americans, uh, is probably a, a welcome thing uh, because it doesn't all of a sudden come up on your, you know, on your bill at the end of the cruise. So that's a really nice difference. Um, room service is at a charge there. Uh, I know that we offer some free room service on our other products uh, as well as some services for charge, but they only offer uh, room service at a charge. Um, they have the faster to the fun. We have the Wi-Fi packages. We have the Cheers package. Uh, you have to make sure that you check out the pricing on that because it is different than for the U.S. Remember, I told you Australians like to drink. Um, and, uh, you know, just like we have Brood for St. Jude, they have Wiggle for Westmead and Conga for Kids. Uh, also very uh, involved in the, in the local um, uh, communities and in, in, in charitable organizations there. So it really is a, a great thing. So everything on board, your, your clients and you will recognize and love, uh, plus a few little differences that I think that you'll enjoy as well. So sometimes I hear pricing's too low these days. I, I work too hard for the commission I earn. Well, here's an opportunity to earn way more commission. So obviously putting together um, a, a trip to Australia is no easy you know, task. Obviously, if this doesn't, require a travel agent this type of vacation does not require the use of a travel agent i don't know what is because this one is a little bit more complicated obviously you're talking about you know trans-pacific air air tickets you're talking about you know you need a uh, not a visa but there's a thing that you have to fill out and who better than you to walk your clients through this so that you make this as seamless as possible and like I said before, if you if you fly to Australia, you're likely not just going to do the cruise. Even if it's a 10 or 12 day cruise, you still may want to spend some time in Sydney or in Brisbane or maybe fly to some other part of Australia while you're there since you've already flown, you know, halfway around the world. Um, uh, so, you know, that's a, another opportunity for you to make money. So cruise lengths uh, can be longer, higher prices, more commission, uh, adding, you know, these uh, these uh, pre and post packages that you might put together for them uh, as well can really help you shoot up your commission uh, payments uh, on, a, on a, and you're gonna have guests that come back who love it and will probably go back. And now we have two options, one out of Sydney and one out of, uh, out of Brisbane. So I think I've gotten through the deck and uh, we have the Q&A time now. So I'm going to uh, wait for the cues so I can hopefully give the A's. Oh, right, Adolfo. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a question here. Uh, the first question is, what is the best time to travel to Australia and recommend to clients? All year long. 
Uh, no, so kidding. So, you know, obviously, because they are in the southern hemisphere, their seasons are op opposite of ours. Um, if you're looking for warm, balmy weather, uh, obviously, you would go during our winter time. Um, so if you're in North America, uh, you know, flying to Australia, the, the winter here is the summer there. So if that's what you want, uh, then you can do that. Uh, obviously, on other times, never gets super, super cold in Australia. At least that's what I've been told by my team that lives there. Um, and uh, so you, you're always going to have a great time to go. But, you know, if you want to go in their summer when the kids are out of school and stuff and you want it to be a family vacation, for example, you want there to be a bunch of kids on board, um, that's probably the best time to go when they have those, you know, summer holidays and all. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it really is, it's a year round destination and we go to the places that you'll enjoy, you know, at the time of year that, that, we're, that we're there. So hope that helps. Awesome. All right. We have another question here. It is, does fly to fun have air options to and from Australia? So fly to fun does not have the, uh, the, um, does not, we don't have that option right now, but we are looking into that, yes. All right. Our next question is, do you have to exchange money to use import stops? So yeah, so when you're traveling to another country, uh, for the most part, you have to uh, exchange your, uh, your dollars into the local currency. Uh, in Australia, is the, they use the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar is actually worth about 64 cents of the U.S. dollar. So if you get, you know, you give them 100 U.S. dollars, you'll, you should get about 164 um, uh, uh, Australian dollars. So the, when the dollar's strong, you know, you get a better exchange rate and you have the ability to, uh, you know, buy more things and spend more money. So uh, and then when you visit some of the islands as well, you know, they obviously either have their own currency or, or would use uh, Australian uh, uh, currency. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, another question we have. Um, what is the gratuity policy on the Australia itineraries? All right. So that, that was one of the differences that I, that I wanted to point out earlier, and that is that we do not charge gratuities on the Australian departures. Uh, so when you go on board, you will not get to see a, a gratuity on your uh, on your bill, on your onboard sale and sign bill, uh, nor will you have the opportunity to pre-purchase uh, gratuities. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, obviously the crew is taken care of there, um, and, and and you know we we take good care of all of our crew. So this is all factored in. However. Um, we do, you know, obviously if you get extra special attention from your room steward or from your, uh, you know, maitre d' or your dining room uh, uh, waiter or waitress, uh, you know, it's always nice. And, you know, Americans are very generous when it comes to tips. Um, and uh, I'm sure that they would welcome anything that, uh, that, uh, that their clients or they may, you know, offer up to our, our team members who work so hard to make uh, their crews uh, amazing. All right. Um, and then uh, one more question here we have, will there be land add-on packages available? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't been doing land packages really in any destination anymore. Uh, we don't offer them in Australia. This is where the use of a travel agent is so important because you guys uh, can put together a package for your clients or maybe buy a pre, you know, pre-made package from a tour operator or something. Um, but like I said, most people are not going to fly to Australia and do just, you know, a seven day cruise and fly home. Um, I would, I would guess that the ma vast majority of Americans or other international countries that, you know, take that journey. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm sort of dreading that journey, <laughs> uh, that's ne that I, that, that I leave on next week because it's going to take me like 30 hours to get there. But let me tell you, once you get there, it's well worth it. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, you're not going to want to just go on a cruise. You're going to want to check out Sydney, maybe spend a few days in Sydney or Brisbane, so, you know, and you have access to the Great Barrier Reef, you know, from Brisbane as well as on the cruises. Uh, and then Australia, like I said, has such a huge country. There are so many different things. It depends on what, you know, your clients like, but there are, you know, deserts and there are mountains and there are, you know, rivers and streams and hiking and uh, there are Aborigines that, you know, that, that have, you know, uh, 
exhibitions. You can learn about those, the, the, you know, the, the Aboriginal people in, uh, in Australia and how they live and, and, and visit them and, and learn, you know, travel is about getting to know the world, right? And opening up your mind that we're, it's not just like how we live in the US or even how we live in Miami versus uh, Chicago. Everybody's different, right? Uh, and getting the opportunity to, to visit a, a country like that that's so vast and has so many things to offer and so many unique experiences, um, you know, it, it really is a trip of a lifetime. And it, it really is something that, uh, you know, I want, I would love for you all to think about us when you're you know, thinking that your clients may want to go to Australia. I was recently on a, um, on a, on a cruise with a travel agent at a conference. And uh, there was this one woman uh, who, uh, who, was on the, uh, who was on the cruise with, uh, with us, she was a travel agent. And I sat with her at dinner one night and um, you know, she said she was so excited about Australia. She's trying to put together a group of 100 cabins. And I told her, if you can get 100 cabins booked within the next 30 days, I'm going to buy your airline ticket. And even that, even if it means I have to pay for it myself, um, because I, I really, you know, love that excitement about this product and this, you know, th these itineraries. And, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's working her way. She's not quite to 100 yet, but uh, she's working, uh, trying to work her magic. And, uh, and uh, you know, it really is a great way to make more commission, to give your clients a trip of a lifetime and have them come back and repeat other things or this, you know, like I said, we have two ships sailing out of there or, you know, try Europe next or, or Alaska or whatever. But um, it really is a, a great, great opportunity for you as a travel advisor uh, to learn as much about this as possible um, and to really get familiar with it so that you have the opportunity to sell this to your clients, who I guarantee you, every single one of you out there has somebody uh, that would want to go uh, to Australia and sail on a carnival cruise. Awesome. Adolfo, would you like to continue with questions or would you like to announce yeah, some winners? Yeah, we can. We're, I think we're, I was a little short on time, so, or not long, I didn't take long enough, so. All right. Let's see what I can find. Don't throw many hard balls now <laughs> or curve balls. <laughs> um, no, what year the Costa Luminosa was built? I might have to phone a friend for that. Maybe Megan can text me. I think it was 2011. It was either 2011 or 2009 and I'll make Megan, um, Megan's listening and she can text me to make sure I'm right. And are there, are there extensive renovations needed for it or anything like that? Oh, so no, I actually didn't talk very much about that. So no, it's not extensive renovations. What we're doing is we're making her a carnival ship. Uh, I know that we've talked about this whole new concept with Costa by Carnival with the Venezia and the Firenze that are you know coming out uh, next year and the year after. Let's see what Megan said. 2009, sorry, 2009. I knew it was 2009 or 2011. So it's a relatively new ship. I know everybody thinks that you know a ship that's more than a day old is old, but she's not old. Um, and she, uh, so anyhow, we are we are completely converting her to look like a carnival ship, other than the whale tail funnel. Uh, maybe that'll come down the road. Um, but we are you know rebranding the spaces to be the spaces that everybody you know knows and loves. Uh, so like an alchemy bar and um, the the. Uh, you know, blue iguana and all the all the things that they expect. Uh, the the pizza del capitano, um, those are all going to be rebranded. Uh, but you're still going to have that Italian flair from the Costa ship uh, on board, um, but with the same great service and the same great food and uh, great activities and entertainment. The playlist productions will be done on board, so they have to do some changes to the main showroom to accommodate that. <clears throat> So yeah, she's she's definitely in dry dock. I just saw a picture of her uh, being uh, painted. Uh, she's gotten her the, where the blue part's going to go is uh, already scraped off and ready for painting, and um, it's just you know she's going to be a really really amazing addition to our to our fleet. Awesome, thank you. Um, I've got a question. I think you'll like uh, yourself, and and I do as well. Um, is there a guy's burger joint on this ship? I don't think so, but I'm going to go back to vegan again. <laughs> She's typing already, so. Oh, burgers, yes, but I don't think it's guys, though. 
Hold on, she's finishing. You can see the little dot, but not guys. Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah, we'll have a burger joint on board. It won't be guys, but it will be a burger joint. Um, so again, in Australia, guy is probably not as famous as he is in the U.S. But um, anyhow, uh, we will have burgers. They will be great. Uh, they just won't be called guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, if there's any more questions and you want to put them in the uh, question box, I'll I'll be happy to to read some off. This is what's so hard about doing a presentation in front of a computer screen because you don't, you know, there's always that you get the energy from the audience and you get, you know, the back and forth and people, you know, start talking more and versus, you know, talking to a black screen or a black box. Uh, I wish I was there with all of you in Australia. <laughs> all right, we have one. Um, do we know when the itineraries will be published? So the itineraries have already been published. The uh, both the Carnival Splendor and the Carnival Luminosa have been opened up in the reservation system and are open for sale. So all the itineraries are loaded in the system in GoCCL Navigator, and you can find information about all the detailed uh, itineraries online at GoCCL. Great. All right. Um, and when do you think the Luminosa is going to go live? Luminosa is live. There you go. <laughs> yes. she, she was she was supposed to launch August 22nd, um, and we had a few bumps in the road. It's not as easy as, you know, let's drag this ship and put it onto the Carnival system. You know, it's not like drag and, drag, drag and drop. Uh, we literally have to build the ship in our system. Um, we were supposed to launch August 22nd, had some uh, bumps in the road, and we ended up opening up officially on the 24th of August. Uh, so yeah, everything's loaded. She's already open for sale. Make sure you you know check out GoCCL for all the details on itinerary, sailing dates, pricing. It's all in U.S. dollars, um, so uh, there's no conversion necessary, or we're not paying in some, you know, in another in the Australian dollar currency or anything like that. It's strictly U.S. dollars and um, really easy to book. I'm telling you, the minute we were able to move her off of Polar onto Navigator. Uh, the world changed for Australia and Americans uh, wanting to go that are carnival guests that or want to be carnival guests. All right. Um, there's another question. Do they operate the kids club still? Yes. Okay. Um... Uh, do you need a passport? You absolutely need a valid passport. Um, as I was saying earlier, you, need, you not only do you need the passport, but you also you can go online, uh, you know, type in Australian entry for U.S. citizens and see what comes up. But uh, there's a there's I don't know if it's a visa or not. I forgot what it's called. Um, I just had to get one myself. And um, <clears throat> you basically fill out some information online. Let's see what Megan is saying. Um, sorry, Megan was texting me something, um, but no, I already knew that. So anyhow, it, there's a form that you have to fill out online. I think if there's a, a nominal fee and it's good for up to a certain period of time, uh, you're allowed to be in Australia as a tourist three, you know, up to three months without actually working there. And, um, you know, that's, that's, again, this is the value of a travel agent. So if I'm a consumer and I don't have a travel agent and nobody tells me I need to do this, I may book a cruise without a passport and without uh, the, um, you know, without the the special visa that you need to do prior to going uh, to Australia. So I ca I'm calling it a visa, but I don't think it's an actual visa or visa-free country. Uh, so, all right. So let's. Uh, we've got some goodies to give away, and we've got some special offers. Should we move on? Yeah. And any of the questions that get quest uh, asked after this, we can uh, respond back to you guys, and we can get back to the agent. If you all righty, let's get into it. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, number one for you, if you book Australia, you're going to earn reward points. You always get reward points. So, you're going to get extra reward points for Australia bookings. So all the bookings must be made and claimed in the Loyalty Rocks reward program by December 31st. So you're going to get 10 bonus points for every Australia booking that you make. So that's going to be great for you because 
you know, we have a store full of goodies and things that you can buy uh, with these points online uh, because we, we definitely love to show you our love and appreciation for all you do. And this is just one more way of doing that. And this is one, this one is really great. So we are offering an exclusive travel advisor only offer and it's as low as $10 a day for the cruise. This is available only to you and your traveling companions. And you know you can see the details here now book through, uh, you can book now through September 30th. Um, it's available on select Carnival Luminosa sailings uh, between November 6th and December 15th. And also the Melbourne Cup, uh, which is uh, on the Splendor October 30th. That one is a very popular cruise. The Melbourne Cup is sort of like the Kentucky Derby of Australia. And, um, you know, we, uh, we would, you know, love it if you had the opportunity to go. Um, you need to book it online. Uh, the rate code is KFA. Um, I never understand these fare codes that we use, uh, what they mean, but it is KFA and uh, it's for new FIT bookings only. It is capacity controlled. So the sooner you book, the better chances you are of getting it. Um, and uh, taxes, fees, and port expenses are additional. And like I said, you do have to book it on GoCCL.com or any other uh, GDS that you may use. It doesn't have to be GoCCL. And then last but not least, we're giving away 10 free Carnival Cruises sailing from Australia late this year. Uh, we do have a short window. Luminosa was introduced very soon prior to being sold, being you know open, opening up for sale. So we have some cabins that we'd love to give to some lucky travel agent partners. Uh, and uh, I think, Justin, you're going to read the, the names. And you all should, whoever's name gets called, should send an email with your information to salescom at carnival.com. And if you do win and you do go, make sure you let us know um, because I, I'd love to connect with you to hear what your thoughts are on how this product is different and maybe help share the story about how amazing the trip was. So if you want to read out the winners. All right. Uh, first, we have Braden Jar as our first winner. Our okay. second winner is Dave Doherty. Third winner, Cassandra Daniels. Number four, Jennifer Wilson. Five, we have Enrique Vega. Six, Jerome Chisholm. Seven, Jody Pierce. Eight, Keisha Horton. Nine, Joyce Joyner. And last but not least, we have Laton Lewis. Well, congratulations to all the winners. I hope you all get the opportunity to take us up on this offer. Um, uh, if your name was called, again, send your name and, and your uh, information to salescom at carnival.com by Monday, the 19th of September. Um, and we'll make sure we get you all the details of the, the applicable sailings. Um, and uh, we hope that we get the opportunity to welcome you on board a carnival ship uh, down under, either from Brisbane or, you know, or maybe the one out of Sydney uh, uh, for the Melbourne Cup. So I, I, have, I had a great time. I you know, hope you all are as excited as I am about us being in Australia, having yet another opportunity for you to sell uh, something different. Uh, you know, we are obviously big in the Caribbean. We're the number one uh, cruise line year round in the Caribbean, West Coast, US. You know, we do some re uh, seasonal Alaska as well as Europe. And Australia is just another thing on the list of things that you can sell Carnival for. And like I said, think about the people uh, that you have in your database uh, and don't discount Carnival as a non-Australia cruise line, we do have, I said, you know, two ships there. One's been there from, or we've been there for 10 years operating and uh, your clients are gonna love the experience in Australia, the ports they visit, and of course the great service and uh, all the great stuff that they're accustomed to on board a Carnival ship. Awesome. Well, thank you, Adolfo. We really appreciate you coming on here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, appreciate being here. Yeah, of course. Um, so just so everyone knows, this webinar was recorded. And again, it will be posted on CLIA's YouTube channel, CLIA Global, if you missed any information. Um, so with that, I think that, that concludes our webinar.
All right. Well, thank you so much again, uh, Clea, for all you guys do for the cruise industry and for Carnival. And of course, all of our agent partners out there who uh, really, uh, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without you. So thank you for your time and for taking time to learn more about, uh, you know, your, your, your job. And the more educated you are, the better you are as an agent and the more successful you'll be. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye.